Comet in Moominland by Tove Janssen Chapter 1, which is about Moomin Troll and Sniff, following a mysterious path to the sea, pearl fishing, the discovery of a cave, and how the muskrat avoided catching a cold. The Moomin family had been living for some weeks in the valley where they had found their house after the dreadful flood, which is another story. It was a wonderful valley, full of happy little animals and flowering trees, and there was a clear, narrow river that came down from the mountain, looped round Moomin House, and disappeared in the direction of another valley, where, no doubt, other little animals wondered where it came from. One morning, it was the morning that Moomin Troll's papa finished building a bridge over the river, the little animal Sniff made a discovery. There were still plenty of things left for them to discover in the valley. He was wandering in the forest when he suddenly noticed a path he had never seen before winding mysteriously into the green shadows. Sniff was spellbound and stood gazing at it for several minutes. It's funny about paths and rivers, he mused. You see them go by and suddenly you feel upset and want to be somewhere else. "'Wherever the path or the river's going, perhaps. "'I shall have to tell Moomin Troll about this, "'and we can explore it together, "'because it would be a bit risky for me to go alone.' "'Then he carved a secret sign on a tree trunk with his penknife "'so that he could find the place again, "'and thought proudly, "'Moomin Troll will be surprised.' "'And after that he scooted home as fast as he could, so as not to be late for lunch. Moomin Troll was just putting up a swing when Sniff got home. He seemed very interested in the mysterious path, and directly after lunch they set off to have a look at it. Halfway up the hill, on their way, grew a clump of blue trees, covered with big yellow pears, and of course they couldn't get past that without Sniff deciding that he was hungry. We'd better only take the windfalls, said Moomin Troll, because Mamma makes jam from these. But they had to shake the tree a little so that there were some windfalls. Sniff was very pleased with their haul. You can carry the provisions, he said, because you haven't got anything else to do, have you? I'm too busy to think about things like that when I'm the path pioneer. When they reached the top of the hill, they turned and looked down at the valley. Moomin House was just a blue dot, and the river a narrow ribbon of green. The swing they couldn't see at all. "'We've never been such a long way from home before,' said Moomin Troll, and a little goose-fleshy thrill of excitement came over them at the thought. Sniff started to snuffle about. He looked at the sun felt the direction of the wind, sniffed the air, and in fact behaved in every way like a great path pioneer. "'It should be somewhere here,' he said busily. "'I made a secret sign with my knife on a plum tree just to where it began.' "'Could it possibly be here?' asked Moomin Troll, pointing to a curly flourish on a tree trunk on the left. "'No, here it is.' screamed Sniff, who had found another curly flourish on a tree trunk on the right. At the same time, they both caught sight of a third curly flourish on a tree trunk right in front of them, but it was terribly high up, at least three feet above the ground. "'That's it, I'm sure,' said Sniff, stretching himself. Oh, "'I must be taller than I thought.' "'Whoa, strike me pink!' exclaimed Moomin Troll, looking around. There are curly flourishes everywhere, and some of them are nearly a hundred feet up. I think you've found a haunted path, Sniff, and now the spooks are trying to stop us using it. What do you say to that? Sniff didn't say anything, but he got very pale about the nose. And at that moment a cackle of spooky laughter broke the silence, and down fell a big blue plum which nearly hit Moomin Troll in the eye. Sniff gave a screech of terror and ran for cover, but Moomin Troll was just angry and had decided to have a look for the enemy when, 
all of a sudden he saw who it was. For the first time in his life he was face to face with a silk monkey. She was crouching in the fork of a tree, a small dark velvety ball. Her face was round and much lighter than the rest of her, about the colour of Sniff's nose when he had washed rather carelessly, and her laugh was ten times bigger than herself. "'Stop that horrible cackling!' shouted Moomintroll when he saw that she was smaller than he. "'This is our valley. You can go and laugh somewhere else.' "'Wretched wretch!' muttered Sniff, pretending he hadn't been frightened. But the silk monkey just hung by her tail and laughed louder than ever. Then she threw some more plums at them and disappeared into the forest with a parting hoot of evil laughter. "'She's running away!' screamed Sniff. Come on, let's follow her. So off they rushed, scrambling headlong through bushes and brambles, under a perfect rain of ripe berries and fir cones, while all the little animals underfoot escaped into their holes as quickly as they possibly could. The silk monkey swung from tree to tree in front of them. She hadn't enjoyed herself so much for weeks. "'Don't you think it's ridiculous to run after a silly little monkey like that?' panted Sniff at last. "'I don't see that she matters.' Moomintroll agreed to this, and they sat down under a tree and pretended to be thinking about something important. The silk monkey made herself comfortable in the fork of a tree above them and tried to look important too. She was having nearly as much fun as before.' "'Take no notice of her,' whispered Moomintroll. Out loud, he said, uh, "'Good spot, this, isn't it, Sniff?' Uh, "'Yes, interesting-looking path, too,' Sniff answered. "'Path?' repeated Moomintroll thoughtfully. And then he suddenly noticed where they were. "'Why, this must be the mysterious path,' he gasped. It certainly looked most mysterious. Overhead, the branches of the plum trees, oaks, and silver poplars met and formed a dark tunnel which led away into the unknown. Now, we must take this seriously, said Sniff, remembering that he was the path pioneer. I'll look for bypaths, and you knock three times if you see anything dangerous. "'What shall I knock on?' asked Moomintroll. "'Whatever you like,' said Sniff. "'Only don't talk. And what have you done with the provisions? I suppose you've lost them. Oh, dear, do I have to do everything myself?' Moomintroll wrinkled his forehead dejectedly, but did not answer. So they wandered farther into the green tunnel. Sniff looking for bypaths, Moomintroll looking for dangerous intruders, and the silk monkey leaping overhead from branch to branch. The path wound in and out of the trees, getting narrower and narrower, until at last it petered out altogether. Moomintroll looked baffled. "'Whoa, that seems to be luck,' he said. "'It ought to have led to something very special.' They stood still and looked at each other in disappointment. But as they stood, a whiff of salt wind blew in their faces, and a faint sighing could be heard in the distance. "'It must be the sea!' exclaimed Moomintroll, with a whoop of joy, and he started running upwind, his heart thumping with excitement, for if there is anything Moomintrolls really love, it is bathing. "'Wait!' screamed Sniff. "'Don't leave me behind!' But Moomintroll didn't stop till he came to the sea, and there he sat down and solemnly watched the waves rolling in, one after another, each with its crest of white foam. After a while, Sniff came out from the fringe of the wood and joined him. "'It's cold here,' he said. "'By the way, do you remember when we sailed with the Hattie Fatners in that dreadful storm, and I was so seasick?' Well, "'That's quite another story.' said Moomintroll. Now I'm going to bathe. 
and he ran straight out into the breakers without stopping to undress, because, of course, Moomin trolls don't wear clothes, except sometimes in bed. The silk monkey had climbed down from her tree and was sitting on the sandy beach watching them. "'What are you doing?' she cried. "'Don't you know it's wet and cold?' "'We've managed to impress her at last,' said Sniff. "'Yes, I say, Sniff, can you dive with your eyes open?' asked Moomin Troll. "'No,' said Sniff, "'and I don't intend to try. "'You never know what you'll see down there on the bottom. "'If you do it, don't blame me if something awful happens.' "'Poo!' said Moomin Troll, diving into a big wave and swimming down through green bubbles of light. He went deeper and came upon forests of crinkly seaweed swaying gently in the current, seaweed that was decorated with beautiful white and pink shells. And even farther down, the green twilight deepened until he could see only a black hole that seemed to have no bottom. Moomin Troll turned round and shot up to the surface, where a big wave carried him right back to the beach. There sat Sniff and the Silk Monkey, screaming for help at the tops of their voices. "'We thought you had drowned,' said Sniff. "'Oh, then a shark had eaten you up!' Pooh, said Moomin Troll again. "'I'm used to the sea. While I was down there I got an idea. A good idea, too.' "'But I'm wondering if an outsider should hear it or not.' "'And he looked pointedly at the silk monkey. "'Go away,' Sniff said to her. Uh, "'This is private.' "'Oh, please tell,' entreated the silk monkey, "'for she was the most inquisitive creature in the world. "'I swear I won't breathe a word.' "'Shall we make her swear?' asked Moomin Troll. "'Well, why not?' answered Sniff. "'But it'll have to be a proper swear.' "'Repeat after me,' said Moomin Troll. "'May the ground swallow me up. "'May old hags rattle my dry bones, "'and may I never more eat ice cream "'if I don't guard this secret with my life. "'Go on now.' The silk monkey repeated the swear, but she was a bit careless over it, because she could never keep a thing in her head for long. Good, said Moomin Troll. Now I'll tell you. I'm going to go pearl fishing, and then I shall bury all my pearls in a box here on the beach. But where shall we find a box? asked Sniff. I shall hand that job over to you and the silk monkey replied Moomin Troll. "'Why do I always have to do the difficult things?' asked Sniff gloomily. "'You have all the fun!' "'You were the path pioneer just now,' said Moomin Troll. "'And besides, you can't dive, so don't be silly.' Sniff and the silk monkey set off along the beach. "'Wretched wretch!' muttered Sniff. He could have looked for his own old box. They poked around for a bit, but after a time the silk monkey forgot what they were supposed to be doing and began to hunt for crabs instead. There was one that always careered off with his odd sideways gait and hid himself under a stone so that they could only see his eyes, which were out on sticks and waved threateningly at them. They followed him for a long time, until he jumped into a crack in the rock and built a wall of sand round himself so that they couldn't get at him. "'Well, he's gone anyway,' said the silk monkey. "'Come on, let's climb the rocks!' It was a wild bit of coast, the rocks steep and jagged. After they had been climbing for a bit, they found themselves on a narrow ledge above the sea, with a sheer rock wall on one side, and a steep drop to the sea on the other. "'Are you too frightened to go any farther?' asked the silk monkey, who found all this very easy, having four legs herself. "'I'm never afraid,' answered Sniff. Uh, "'But I think the view is better from here.' The silk monkey grinned jeeringly, and pranced off with her tail in the air. 
After a time, Sniff heard her laugh. Hello, she shouted. I've found a house for myself. Not a bad house either. Sniff hesitated a moment, but he couldn't resist the thought of the house. He had always loved houses in unusual places. So he shut his eyes tightly and set off along the ledge. The spray drenched him several times, and he offered up a prayer to the protector of all small beasts. Never in his life had he been so frightened or felt so brave as he did creeping along that ledge. Suddenly he tripped over the silk monkey's tail and opened his eyes. She was lying on her tummy with her head stuck into a hole in the rock, talking and laughing nineteen to the dozen. Well, said Sniff, where's this house you were talking about? In here, screeched the silk monkey, and she disappeared completely into the rock. Then Sniff saw that it was a cave, a real cave such as he had always dreamed of finding. Its mouth was rather small, but inside it opened out into a big room. The rocky walls rose smoothly up to a gap in the roof, which let in the sunlight, and the floor was covered with smooth white sand. The silk monkey scuttled off to a cranny in one corner of the cave and started to sniff and poke at the sand. There may be a lot of crabs here, she cried. Come and help me look. Don't disturb me, said Sniff solemnly. This is at the biggest moment of my life so far, and it's my first cave. He smoothed the sand with his tail and sighed. I shall live here forever, he thought. I shall put up little shelves, and dig a sleeping hole in the sand, and have a lamp burning in the evenings, and perhaps I'll make a rope ladder so that I can go up to the roof and look at the sea. Moomin Troll will be surprised. And then he suddenly remembered Moomin Troll's pearl fishing and the box. I say, Silk Monkey, he said, what about that box? Do you think Moomin Troll really needs it? What box? asked the silk monkey, whose memory was exceedingly short. Come on, I think it's beginning to get boring here. And in a twinkling she was out of the cave, back along the ledge and down on the sand again. Sniff followed slowly. Several times he turned round and looked back at the cave proudly. He was so full of it that he quite forgot to be afraid on the dangerous ledge, and he was still deep in thought as he trudged along the beach to the place where he had left Moomin Troll pearl fishing. There was already a row of shining pearls, and out in the breakers Moomin Troll was bobbing up and down like a cork, while the silk monkey sat on the sand busily scratching herself. I am the treasurer, she said importantly. Now I've counted these pearls five times, and each time it comes to a different answer. Isn't that extraordinary? Moomin Troll waded out of the water with his arms full of oysters. He even had several on his tail. Phew, he said, shaking the seaweed out of his eyes. Oh, that'll do for today. Where's that box? Well, there weren't so very many good boxes on this beach said Sniff, uh, but I've made a great discovery. What was that? asked Moomin Troll, for a discovery, next to mysterious paths, bathing and secrets, was what he liked most of all. Sniff paused and then said dramatically, A cave! A real cave? asked Moomin Troll, with a hole to creep in through, and rocky walls, and a sandy floor. Everything, answered Sniff proudly, a real cave that I found myself. He winked at the silk monkey, but she was counting the pearls for the eighth time, and wasn't bothering herself about the cave any more. That's splendid, said Moomin Troll. "'Wonderful news! A cave is much better than a box. 
We'll take the pearls there at once. Oh, that's just what I had thought of doing myself, said Sniff. So they carried the pearls to the cave and arranged them neatly on the floor, and then lay down on their backs looking up at the sky through the gap in the roof. Do you know something? said Moomin Troll. If you fly hundreds and hundreds of miles up into the sky, you come to where it isn't blue any more. It's quite black. In the daytime, too. Why's that? asked Sniff. It just is, answered Moomin Troll. And up there in the dark are great sky monsters, such as uh, scorpions, bears and rams. Are they dangerous? asked Sniff. Not to us, replied Moomin Troll. They only snap up a few stars now and again. Sniff pondered this deeply, and after a while they stopped talking and just lay watching the sunlight, which poured through the roof, creep over the sand and shine on Moomin Troll's pearls. It was late in the evening when Moomin Troll and Sniff got back to the blue house in the valley. The river flowed with hardly a ripple under the bridge, which showed up vividly in its new coat of paint, and Moomin Mamma was arranging shells round the flower beds. "'We've had supper,' she said. "'You'd better see what you can find in the larder, my dears.' Moomin Troll was hopping with excitement. "'We've been at least a hundred miles from here,' he said. We followed a mysterious path, and I found something terribly valuable that begins with P and ends with L. But I can't tell you what it is, because I'm bound by swear. And I found something that begins with C and ends with E, squeaked Sniff. And somewhere in the middle there's an A and a V, but I won't say any more. Well, said Moomin Mamma, fancy that. Two big discoveries in one day. Now run and get your supper, dears. The soup is keeping hot on the stove, and don't clatter about too much. Papa is writing. And she went on laying out shells, one blue, two white, and a red, in turns, and it looked very fine indeed. She whistled quietly to herself and thought there was rain in the air. A wind was getting up, and now and again a strong gust shook the trees, turning their leaves inside out, and Moomin Mamma noticed an army of clouds massing on the horizon and beginning to march up the sky. "'I do hope there isn't going to be another flood,' she thought, picking up some shells that were left over and going into the house as the first drops of rain began to fall. In the kitchen she found Moomin Troll and Sniff curled up together in a corner, tired out by their adventures. She spread a blanket over them and sat down by the window to darn Moomin Papa's socks. The rain was pattering on the roof and rustling outside, while far away it dripped into Sniff's cave. And deep in the forest the silk monkey crept farther down into her hollow tree and folded her tail round her neck to keep warm. Late that night, when everybody had gone to bed, Moomin Papa heard a plaintive noise. He sat up and listened. The rain gushed down the drain pipes, and somewhere a shutter banged in the wind. Then came the pitiful sound again. He put on his dressing gown and went to have a look round the house. He looked into the sky-blue room into the sun-yellow one, and into the spotted one, and everywhere it was silent. At last he drew the heavy bolt of the door and looked out in the rain. His torch lit up a strip of the path, and raindrops glittered like diamonds in the light. "'What in the world have we here?' exclaimed Moomin Papa, for on the steps sat something wet and miserable." with shiny black eyes. "'I am the muskrat,' said the wretched creature faintly. "'A philosopher, you know. I should just like to point out that your bridge-building activities have completely ruined my house in the riverbank, and although ultimately 
It doesn't matter what happens. I must say, even a philosopher does not care for being soaked to the skin. I am most extremely sorry, said Moomin Papa. I had no idea that you lived under the bridge. Please do come in. I'm sure my wife can make a bed up for you. I am not a great one for beds, said the muskrat. They are unnecessary furniture, really. It was only a hole I lived in, but I was happy there. Of course, it's all the same to a philosopher, whether he is happy or not. But it was a good hole. After these words, which were not intended to be ungracious, he managed to gather enough energy and enthusiasm to go into the house, where he shook the water off him and said, What an extraordinary house this is! It's a Moomin house, said Moomin Papa, who realized that he was talking to an extraordinary person. I built it myself in another place, but it floated here in a great flood we had some months ago. I hope you will be happy here. I find it a very good place to work in. I can work anywhere, said the muskrat. It's all a matter of thinking. I sit and think how unnecessary everything is. Really? said Moomin Papa, much impressed. Perhaps I might offer you a glass of wine against the cold. Wine, I am bound to say, is unnecessary, replied the muskrat. But a small drop, nevertheless, would not be unwelcome. So Moomin Papa stole into the kitchen and opened the wine cupboard in the dark. He was stretching up for a bottle of palm tree wine on the top shelf, stretching and stretching, when all at once there was a terrible crash. He had knocked over a vegetable dish. In a moment the house came to life. People shouted and banged doors, and Moomin Mamma came running downstairs with a candle in her paw. Oh, it's you, she said. I thought someone must have broken in. I wanted to get the palm tree wine down said Moomin Papa, and some silly fool had put that stupid vegetable dish right on the edge of the shelf. Never mind, said Moomin Mamma. It's really a good thing it's broken. It was so ugly. Climb up on the stool, dear. It will be easier. So Moomin Papa climbed up on a stool and got down the bottle and three glasses. Who is the third one for? asked Moomin Mamma. The muskrat, answered Moomin Papa, a great man. He's coming to live here, with your approval, my dear. And he called the muskrat in and introduced him to Moomin Mamma. Then they sat on the veranda and drank each other's health, and Moomin Troll and Sniff were allowed down too, although it was the middle of the night. It was still raining, and the wind had got trapped in the chimney and was howling eerily. I have lived on this river the whole of my life, said the muskrat, and never have I ever seen such weather. Not that it makes any difference to me, of course, except for giving me something new to think about. It would be much better if it rained in the hot, dried-up valley on the other side of the mountains. We don't need rain here with the heavy dew we get every morning. How do you know what it's like on the other side of the mountains if you've lived here all your life, Uncle Muskrat? asked Sniff. Uh, an otter who swam down here once told me, answered the Muskrat. I never make unnecessary journeys myself. I love making journeys, cried Moomin Troll. There are hardly any unnecessary things, I think. Only eating porridge and washing. Hush, child, said Moomin Mamma. 
The muskrat is a wise man who knows about everything and why it is unnecessary. I only hope, as I said, that there isn't going to be another flood. Who knows, said the muskrat. There has certainly been something strange in the air lately. I have had vague forebodings and thought more than usual. It's all the same to me what happens, but one thing is certain, that something is going to happen. Something awful? asked Sniff, pulling his nightshirt tighter around him. One never knows, said the muskrat. Now we'll all go to bed, said Moomin Mama. It's not good for children to hear frightening stories at night. So they all crept into their own corners and went to sleep. But in the morning the rain clouds were still marching over the sky, and the lonely wind howled through the blue trees. <laughs>